Gate and Jenkins usually go hand in hand and that's the reason why it's so much required by most of the companies. But how does it actually works and how does it goes hand to hand? Let us understand in this video. But even before going to the Gate, let's understand what are the different orgs that are available within Salesforce and how normal deployment happens and what is the problem with that normal deployment and how actually Git helps with that. Okay, so let's say there is a dev org, there's a QA org, there's a UASIT org and the production org. Now, this dev org is basically used by developer to develop, right? So developer usually develop all the things that they want and they develop, deploy it to the QA org, right? Where the QA will is going, QA team is going to test, test the functionality, basic functionality it is going to test by running the scripts. Now, once QA is done, it is deployed to the UAT, UAT or SIT. That is where the customer is going to actually test. Customer is going to run his two test cases and check whether it is working fine or not. And if it is fine, then it moves to the production where actually customer uses that system. Now, if let's say you are not going to use Git and you are going to use VS Code or Workbench or Chainset or what not. So if let's say that you are on a sprint one and you are using any one of this above. And in that case, what you are going to do is you are going to deploy from dev to the QA and normally from the QA to the UAT SIT and then finally to the production. Let's say now after the sprint one, there is sprint two. Again, you are going to use using VS Code and you are using Workbench and change sets. And again, you are doing the same thing. You are moving the code from dev to the production by following steps, right? Now, if you are following this, let's say there is some bug in the sprint two, right? You were on the sprint two before, and there is some issue in the sprint two, right? And we need to give demo to the client for sprint one user story, and functionality was working good in the sprint one. So let's say there was particular functionality which is conflicting in sprint one and sprint two, and sprint one it was working perfectly fine. In sprint two, as soon as you move the code, what has happened is the functionality is not working fine, and you need to give the demo to the client. Now, someone might think, okay, if it is not working uh, the code of sprint 2, just pull the code of sprint 1 and push it to the sprint 2. That's it, right? Just revert back the code as it is. Okay. But now, how will you find out what were the components that were deployed inside the sprint 1? Even if you maintain an Excel sheet, it will always lead to human errors, right? It will always lead to human errors. So, with that problem, What's going to happen is that you are never going to be able to find out what were the components that were deployed inside the sprint one. Hence, you are not able to revert back the code and you find yourself in an infinite loop that which components were deployed inside the sprint one. So you won't be able to how to find out what was pushed in the last sprint or any sprint, right? You won't have any kind of uh, what we call it as uh, any kind of version or we cannot save any kind of repository to maintain what was deployed inside sprint one and what was deployed inside sprint two so reverting back will be not an option for you again let's say you want to move it to the like let's say you want to do version control version control basically again with the same problem if you want to move the code move the version of the particular code to the previous version you cannot do it because you just don't have the track if you see right now you don't have any track you're just blindly deploying from one org to another org so that's where this gate comes into the picture okay so as you can see git is at the top and we have other org so from the dev you can push it to the git git is a source of truth for yourself right for any of the org as above git can be acting as a source of truth because there will be the actual code even if you de delete everything from here you will at least have the code inside git right so that is the benefit of using git and you can also do the version controlling and also you will have the track what was deployed in what stages so you can see you can push the code from the dev to the git but you just don't push it to the git you have a master branch this master branch has the whole code okay it will have whole code of the overall development that you have done till this point so master branch is going to actually hold whole code okay so it was going to hold the whole code now let's say if you want to if you have developed something and you want to push it to the code okay if you want to push it to the git you just cannot push it directly to the master branch you cannot do it okay because master branch has the original code right and if you are pulling pushing something to the master branch it should be verified it should be verified by the tech lead that whether the code is fine or not because then it can mess up the master branch so that's the reason why first whatever you're going to push it to the master branch it needs to be verified before even merging it to the master branch, it needs to be verified whether it is up to date, up to the mark or not, or whether it will hamper any kind of functionality, the previous functionality or the code of the master branch. So for that purpose, what you do is you create your own separate branch. Inside Git itself, you can create your own separate branch. Let's name it as branch one. And 
from the div what you are going to do is you are going to push the code from the div to that particular branch not in the master branch but you are going to push it to the particular branch now in this branch you can find all the components that you have deployed let's say you have deployed component 1 component 2 component 3 component 4 and whatnot so whatever you have deployed within this branch will be visible to you over here now as soon as it is visible to you you can also find the code on inside it right code 1 code 2 code 3 i am just defining inside the component these were the codes code i have done right so i can easily find out what code was done within this particular component or any other component so what usually happens is that you create a branch you push your code to the branch now there are multiple components now tech lead what they are going to do is if there is a tech lead or manager what they are going to do is they are going to review these components they are going to check whether the functionality is matching the components that has to be changed or that has to be deployed right and they will also ask you justification why have you pushed this component or what not right and within that component they are also going to check the code is there in null check whether the code is doing the particular functionality or not and whether there is a null check whether it is uh, qualifying the particular standards or not and once all this thing is done this code is been approved okay this code has been approved it can be also rejected most of the time it is rejected and goes to review again you have to uh, make the changes and push it to the branch again the manager is going to review it till the point it approves now as soon as this code has been approved the components and branch one has been approved this branch can be now merged to the master branch because now it's verified it's verified by the tech lead manager or whatnot there are at least i think so there are three approvers manager tech lead and if there is if you're a junior developer then it will be a senior developer or there can be a project manager as well if you're a senior developer in my case it's project manager tech lead and manager okay so these are the three people that they are going to go through the my go through my code and they're going to deploy or merge it to the master branch now once the code is been merged to this particular master branch from there it can be pushed to the qa it can be pushed to uat it can be pushed to production so basically this is where the jenkins comes into the picture now many of the people might heard ci cd pipeline and what is jenkins and what is git and why it is why is jenkins used now git has done his work right it git has uh, been holding all the repository now what is the use of this jenkins right so now jenkins is used for the actual deployment you can take the branches and from the git you need to again push it to the qa but it won't happen automatically right it cannot happen automatically so what's going to happen is that you have to take this branch and from the git you have to push it back to the qa that's what you have to do manually in case if there is no jenkins at all but what you can do is using jenkins you can directly deploy or uh, you can uh, do the automation deployment over here okay you can uh, directly deploy without any intervention of the human now what do i mean by that is let's say the code was on the branch it which is merged to the master now it has to be pushed to the qa so for that purpose you have to do this manually most of the times i have seen you have to take this branch one and you have to provide it to the jenkins now what jenkins is going to do is even before actual deployment is just going to do a mock deployment now that what we also call validation or running the build usually your tech lead might ask you to run the build in jenkins or do a validation or something like that it's simply nothing but test deployment this means you are doing a false deployment just to check whether uh, when you are going to do an actual deployment will it fail or not what issues are you are going to get right it's much more better to do a false deployment and check whether there is any issue or not and if you find any issues you can immediately resolve it without hampering the code right so here what you do is first you need to give the branch to the jenkins that then the uh, then the jenkins is going to do is uh, he is going to do the validation okay mock deployment running build or validation we call the same thing basically it's just a false deployment it's a test deployment that whether the if we actually do the deployment will it work fine or not now once the build has been passed or the validation or the mock deployment has been passed now this branch branch will be with the checkbox green checkbox okay that the uh, uh, validation has been build has been passed something like that okay that check will, you will get over here over here now what this jenkins is going to do is after that whatever branches whose build has been already passed it's just going to pull it from the git and it's going to automatically deploy it to the qa there is no need of intervention at all of the human you can directly deploy it from the dev to the qa using jenkins and the git so jenkins is directly going to pull the validation passed branch and it's going to push it to the qa so automatically your code has been moved to the qa with the proper manner now if you see in the previous slides using branch i was able to find out the components as well so even tomorrow 
if something messes up i can just go to that particular branch and find out which components did i push into that particular uh, version or particular sprint and i can make the changes accordingly so i have that version control or we can say i have the repository where i can see the code what was pushed at what time which sprints uh, on what sprints did i push something so that is the important problem that git and jenkins jenkins is basically used to do the deployment but git solves git provides the repository with the help of which you can maintain the code right you can actually maintain the code you can actually actually maintain the versions of it right so now once your deployment is done to the qa okay that's fine that the qa team is going to test and it's going to work on it after that again you can run the jenkins okay you can use the jenkins same similar way to deploy to the uat or even to the productions but most of the times what what uh, i th i see company do, does is that uh, what company does is this is where the devop teams comes into the picture now devop teams is going to come and going to go going to go ahead and ask to the devs what are the branches that has to be pushed okay till qa this is fine we can use jenkins but after this what's going to happen is that is going to uh, the devops teams is going to go to the dev and going to ask what are the branches that has to be pushed to the uat and production now after that what's going to do is uh, the devops team is going to take all those branches okay i'm just representing branch one but there can be multiple branches or multiple developers so they are going to call it all of the branches and they're going to name it something like uat prod or something like the uat sit uh, deployment or something like that okay they're going to take all of these branches and they are again going to run the build for it Okay, they are again going to run the build for all the branches together to check whether if they are going to push it to UAT slash SIT, will there be any issues? Now, once that validation or the build running has been passed, automatically again Jenkins is going to pull it and push it to the UAT slash SIT. Now, again, there is also provided version control, and along with that, you are only pushing the code that is necessary because in UAT SIT or production, you cannot push any code that you want to just like QA. In UAT and SIT, you have to have proper code that is to be pushed. Not much, too many, too much code has to be pushed. Not too less code has to be pushed. Exact amount of code has to be pushed, and that's the reason why DevOps teams comes into the picture. They're going to take all the branches from you, and they're going to run a build inside the UAT SIT, and they're going to deploy it. They're not going to deploy. It. They're going to just run the build, and they're going to keep it. After that, Jenkins knows. Okay, this build has been passed. Just push, push this particular uh, whole branches and push it to the UAT slash SIT. thus pushing pushing the only exact code that is required now once this is done for the product uat slash sid similar thing has to be also done inside the production so you have already the devop teams might have already created the branch all the branches they have might have gathered now they already have that set of the branches that has to be pushed they will just push this uh, they will just take that particular branch set of the branches they will run the validation against the production and they will deploy it using they are not not they jenkins is again going to deploy it to the production So this is how you are developing a pipeline, right? If you see right now, you are just developing a pipeline, which we also call CI/CD pipeline. Not exactly the CI/CD pipeline, but this is how usually G Git and Jenkins goes hand to hand in order to do the overall deployment and also maintain the version control. So this was all about Jenkins and uh, Git. If you found this video helpful, I request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel.